Hey, thanks for checking out this video. Today I'm gonna to be building a modern style bench using some six quarter red oak and finishing it with Rubio Monocoats cotton white. So the first things that I wanna do is I wanna start breaking my material into more manageable pieces. So here I am laying out which pieces are going to be for what part of the bench. And then I'm going to start breaking them down and setting them aside so that way I can mill them up a lot easier. One of the things I'm doing is so the bench legs are 14 inches. So what I'm doing is I'm just doing 30 inches for the legs and then I will cut those in half because I don't want to have to mill up multiple pieces of leg at 14 inches. It's just easier this way for me. So I'm going to joint one face over at the joiner and then joint one edge. And I will take it over to the planer after this to get everything down to the same thickness. Now that I have one edge jointed and both faces coplanar, I'm going to rip off the rough edge at the table saw to get all my pieces to the same width. And one thing you're probably thinking is I probably got rid of the labeling that I had and I wrote it on the end grain so that way I would still be able to see it. And make sure you're alternating your grain up, down, up, down. And here I'm using the in and out method. I'm really bad at explaining how this works, but basically you just take, you write in, out, in, out on all of your edges or all of your joints. And then you take it over to your jointer and the eye goes inside against the fence. And then when you flip that board over, the O is going to go on the outside away from the fence. So what that essentially does is gets you perfect joints every time it is something that I've been doing and it really helps. Then there you can see I'm marking for dominoes. So I wrote a little D on the end. So when I cut these to their final length that you know where that domino is and I don't cut into a domino. The dominoes are strictly for just alignment. So it makes my sanding process a lot easier. They don't add any strength. You can use biscuits or you can use nothing at all and just use some calls to get your glue up dead flat but I have a domino so I just use those and I'm using Pony Jorgensen 90 degree parallel clamps I use those for pretty much everything they are really great and I'm a big fan And here are the legs you can see, so I milled them up and now I'm going to cut them to 15 inches. So still not quite their final length, but um, very close. And then I left the legs a little wide after I milled them up just in case I needed that extra length, but I did not. So I'm going to rip those down right now before I glue up the legs. Then I'm gonna do that same in and out process here. I didn't show it, but just to get a perfect joint. I also added a couple dominoes for the alignment as well. Something this small, usually you don't need it, but I just really wanted to make sure everything was nice and flat. Then I'm going to take one edge over to the jointer. So that way I know that that is dead straight. And I'm using that as my reference here on my crosscut sled to cut my legs to their final dimension. I'll cut one end and then I will cut the other and I have a little stop you can see on my crosscut sled so that way I get the same exact cut every time. Then send them through the table saw again, getting them cut to their final width. Now I'm going to cut a three inch piece for the stretchers that are going to have a half lap in them as well. So again, I'm using this crosscut sled. I made this specifically for this build and I'm using a flat tooth grind blade as well. So that way I just had a little more control than when I was using the dado stack. It is some extra work, but uh, I really think the results spoke for themselves in doing this. I will also link that blade below. And then this next part with the stretcher, I uh, 
learned a little lesson here. So I made something right there, as you can see, to the thickness of the dado, but that didn't account for the thickness of the blade. So basically I had to make something the thickness of the dado plus the width of the blade. So that was that little stop there. And if you do that, you get a perfect dado every time to match your leg pieces. Then you can see here, test fit them. They both fall into place perfectly. And now I'm gonna use my track saw to cut the top to its final length, which I believe was 56 inches. I will double check my dimensions and link them all down below. I have the Makita track saw. I really like it. I get asked about it a lot. Um, it's worked great for me. I've had it for about two years now. So um, if you're interested in a track saw, it's definitely a good one. And now we're gonna go to the table saw and cut our top to the same thickness as the legs. And then we set it on there, make sure that everything is good, and it is. And I'm gonna be using the domino to attach the top to the legs. You can use figure eight fasteners. I have a video showing how to use those. Those would work great. I just really liked how it looked without any fasteners at all. So that's what I did. And now I'm marking the leg and the underside of the bench so I know which one is which. Then I'm going to draw a line so I know where to bring the legs up to. So here you'll see you do my X to X, bring it up to the line, then I'm going to clamp it in place. And double check that it is even, and it is. And then this is another thing I don't really know how to explain, but I'll link the video below. Uh, basically I'm using that like quarter inch piece that I made. So I'm referencing the base of my domino instead of using the, whatever you would call that, the depth gauge on the top. So basically, if you do this and you use that spacer, you get everything nice and centered on about an inch and a quarter material. But again, I'll link that video. Now I'm going to be wiping everything down with mineral spirits, because I'm using Rubio Monocoat Cotton White, my first time using this. Um, it is a three to one ratio, so you do three parts of the stain and then one part of the accelerator. And then one thing I just didn't show in here, I don't know, I just didn't have a good video of it. Basically, I use this little scraper here to wipe everything on. And then I use a white scotch bright pad to rub everything in. And then once everything's rubbed in, you need to wipe it dry after about 10 minutes. I'll link the videos that I watched as well down below showing, I think, the Wood Whisper and Jason from Bourbon Moth, some good informative videos on what they do when using Rubio. This was my first time using it and it was pretty easy to do and I really liked how it turned out. It made this red oak look really amazing. A lot of people thought that it was white oak, so I think a uh, job well done. And then like I said before, you wipe away all the excess and I didn't show that for some reason. Then I'm putting glue in all my domino holes here, making sure that it's nice and evenly spread. And then on the underside, you can see I put some tape there because I didn't want any finish to get into the domino holes and stop the dominoes from adhering. Then I'm locking everything into place here. Can use a couple scraps here because I did not want to mess up the top of my bench. So I used a couple pieces of uh, pine right there so I could get some nice even clamping pressure. And these four clamps worked perfectly. Had a little squeeze out, so wiped away that, checked to make sure there wasn't anything anywhere else. Thank you for checking out the build video. I really appreciate it. Make sure and like and subscribe. Uh, let me know what you thought in the comments. Follow me on all social media at Gerber Design Co. And we will see you on the next build.